how old you've become. I know this is like year three on YouTube. You think I have like a hundred thousand subs by now or something, especially with all the cool videos that I do. You know what I've come for. Uh, you want my skill of storytelling? Matt, to Skywalker. I know you found it. And now you're gonna give it to the First Order. Map. Map. I will show you the dark side. I have this Isla Sorna illustration. That's kind of cool, right? You are so right. Okay, cool, because for a minute they're all What the fuck? Greetings, program! Now, if you noticed, I do all of my own voiceovers for my short films, or people call them skits, for my toy reviews, including Kylo Ren. I'm a Terminator. Cyberdyne Systems model number 101. Where's Barry? There is no Barry. And now, I'm not a professional. I'm an INFLUENCER! And I'm not saying that my Kylo is the best Kylo, but this video is something to provide a basis for you to start off as and with, because I'm all about first things first, do not use your normal talking voice. I see so many people that put on the helmet, not this one, this is a beautifully modded helmet by As Evil As Dead Studios, the Black Series helmet, they put it on and they're like, I will finish what you started. Using their normal ass human voice, no acting at all, that shit sucks. Stop that. You know what else needs to be stopped? This shit. I feel it again. The call to the light. Stop that shit. Just by lowering your voice, you think you're Kylo Ren. You're not fucking Kylo Ren. So this is how to talk like Kylo Ren or how to voice act. First thing up is research. When impersonating somebody, you must study them. Let's study Adam Driver. Watch their speech patterns. Do they talk fast? Do they talk slow? Do they have an accent? Do they stutter? Is it nasally? Is it high? Is it low? Listen, we talk way too much as a species. Slow down and make it not about yourself for once. So let's study Adam Driver. Let's watch some SNL videos. This is Colbert. We need to watch interviews, all kinds of videos. Adam's got a very interesting voice. It's low, but not like too low. And it's juxtaposingly soft and a little bit high. It seems that he's in the interviews here. It kind of sounds like it's coming from like the back or the low end. That's what I was doing for my previous impression, which wasn't the greatest, but now I'm doing a little bit better. Study the face. Do they move their eyebrows, their nose, their jaw, their mouth, their lips? Watch tons of different examples to get a feel for the person. If you're creating a new character, test your own range. Record yourself and pick out which one you think best suits the character. But if you're doing Kylo, we need to study Kylo. Your son. Gone. Your son is gone. He was weak and foolish like his father. He was weak and foolish like his father. So I destroyed him. So I destroyed him. Now it doesn't seem like this Kylo voice is the same as Drivers, whereas I said Drivers is more like the back and low. It feels like more the middle and middle of Kylo's voice. Also, when him, as I show a, po a photo uh, I have here from the screen cap of Han, I mean Kylo. And it seems that Kylo talks a little bit faster and higher when a normal conversation, like say Snoke, without his helmet. And when he's feeling sympathy or sadness, like with his dad right here, talks a little more softer and slower. And this is my own analysis. Feel free to make your own. I may be wrong. This is just art. I'm here, like I said, to provide a basis for you. So feel free to do so. Number two. Relax. Christopher Plummer credits his sports background as to why he transitioned into acting so well. And we skied. Skiing was my favorite sport after tennis, both equally. And so I've always done sports. And so you never had to go to a theater school and stand in front of the mirrors and with your hand on the ballet bar and do your PAs? No, I could have done that. It probably might have helped, but I, I didn't need to because I already had a I think one's body, when you're used to sports, is, uh, does its own work for you, you know? It leads you on. And I can see why. Before exercising, what do you do? You warm up. So do actors. So first of all, relax your muscles. Massage your face, your neck. 
crank it from side to side. The whole point of this exercise is to relieve tension. If you're tense, you are not going to perform. What does Ronaldo do? Arguably the best football player in the world. He... Breathe. By doing this, you're gonna free yourselves from mannerism or bad habits like mechanical, AKA fake acting, and relieving tension that interferes with your ability to express yourself. You're freeing yourself inside as you warm up on the outside. Next is to prepare. We just did a little bit of preparation actually by warming up, but now we're gonna go into the externals. I have long hair. Why? Because Kylo Ren has long hair. I feel like having this is sort of a way to connect to the character more and get myself more into character. And if you can prep yourself mentally by changing physical things, do it. Watch Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel do their voiceover sessions for Guardians of the Galaxy. They use props, both real and imaginary, to get more into the character or feel like what the character is doing. You're taking the battery and you're affixing it to the uh, armband that the, the uh, prison guard had. You're, you're fixing everything together. Okay. I live for the simple things. Like how much this is gonna hurt. <clears throat> Even Nick Offerman here in the Lego movie squinted one of his eyes to do a voiceover like a pirate. If anything external or on the outside like this will help you, use it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mime throwing more things at you and just okay. vocalize uh, okay. more. Look, I, uh, I watch a lot of cop shows on TV and isn't there supposed to be a good cop in that scenario also? If so, I'd like to talk to him, please. But you can't just rely on appearance. You have to prepare internally. You have to get into a creative mood. If you are not in the mood, your acting will be mechanical. So choose an object nearby. Give it an imaginary story. Let's do two of these guys, Undertaker and Roman Reigns, who fought at WrestleMania 33. I'm going to have the Undertaker choke slam him and then pin him and then he goes off as champion. So what goes now? Undertaker retires in an imaginary story but he's gonna retire to the tub all the way down in the basement in the storage. Maybe in the future I'll have a kid and the kid will ask for me to play with this Undertaker toy. I'm gonna to say, you know what? You're my son or, ch or daughter and I'm gonna let you play. And then maybe she'll fuck up the paint and she'll scratch it up and they'll get black marts and maybe I'll have to buy a new one for like $150 in eBay in like 2030. And maybe this action feature will be broken and maybe this swivel won't be you know working anymore. And maybe she'll end up giving it to a friend in kindergarten because she wanted to trade for a Kurt Angle one, even though they don't have a Kurt Angle one. But use your mind, mentally prepare with objects around you. So what's the next step? Figure out an object from scratch completely with your imagination. So I'm imagining a basketball. You have to imagine the size, the texture, the weight, how it feels in your hands. Do some actions with it, dribble, shoot, Run over to the imaginary basket, pick it up, maybe play some soccer with it. You need to go into realistic detail and this will get us to the truth. If you imagine exaggerated details doing these warm exercises, you will give an exaggerated performance, a fake performance on set or on stage. What you just did is use your sensory memory by recollecting experiences in order to get lost in our imagination and get us into a creative mood. We need to start up our imagination like a car and we need to keep driving until we're done with it for the performance for the day. And what's our destination when we're driving this car? It's called the objective. Our imagination will dry up if we have no purpose or journey for it. We need to concentrate like this because the role you play will come alive because you are inside the character thinking constant thoughts and imagination. Now you may think this is a little bit crazy or it's too much, but there's a reason. Bad voiceover sessions are the ones that are not prepared. Also, by preparing, we're opening ourselves up to improvisations, let alone setting ourselves up for actions that our character is about to partake in. Lots of great impressions on the internet are nothing but catchphrases and not actual linguistics. They only master quotes but can't move on to full dialect in character. That's what separates greatness from everything else. Now that you've warmed up your imagination with your sensory memory, you can feel how the character feels, talk like how the character would talk. If you have a director, maybe he or she wants you to say a line differently, and you can do that now because you're the character, you're in character. So let's do it. Let's try out drivers. Kylo, if you're not good enough to dive into the voice of Kylo like I am so far, 
you kind of tend to start with a quote from the movie and then you proceed into regular improvisational dialogue. So we're gonna go to Kylo versus Ray. Tell me about the droid. Tell me about the droid. He's carrying a section of the navigation. Carrying a section of the navigational yeah. chart. We, we know the rest. Recovered from the from the archives of the empire. From the archives of the empire. You notice how he his his voice kind of fluctuated there. And somehow you convinced the droid to show it to you. And somehow you convinced the droid to show it to you. It kind of went a little softer and, and kind of like a cracking of a cry type of deal. You. You. A scavenger. A scavenger. You know I can take whatever I want. You know I can take whatever I want. He went softer there. You were so lonely. You were so lonely. So afraid to leave. So afraid to leave. At night. At night. Desperate, desperate to sleep. sleep. Imagine an ocean. You imagine an ocean. I see it. I see it. I see the island. Full of YouTubers. And they went on a YouTube rewind. And I wasn't invited. I think I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna go cry in my bed now. Thanks a lot, YouTube. I'm not at 100,000 subscribers. That is Kylo without the helmet on. So if you're struggling still with this, I can suggest concentrating on the objective, like I previously stated, of each scene. What is the situation taking place? If you walk into a scene, you must know who you are, where you came from, where you've entered, who else is there with you, and other circumstances that must influence your action. All external production is cold if you do not motivate from within. Also, do not anticipate the future of the plot. Live in the present and let the character's backstory affect your current mood. This will help your imagination dive deeper into the role. It'll also create the illusion of the first time in each performance by living in the now. So put your feelings into the objective. Your nature's instincts will control your externals and direct you to truthful action. So if you wanna have it just like in the film where it's computer post-process, like in the beginning of this video, take the helmet, put it on, and do your impression. You know what I've come for. You know what I've come for. Driver wore the helmet for his voiceover session. How do I know this without even seeing any behind the scenes of him doing it? I sent Andre, my friend who did the post-processing, two different samples, one without the helmet on and one with the helmet on. And the one with the helmet sounded a hell of a lot like Kylo Ren from the film. So if you're really going crazy for a Kylo Ren impression in a film post-process with a computer, you wear this during your voiceover session. Andre used Rapture software to post-process my voice and used settings like noise gate, compressor, pitcher, and de -esser. I scoured YouTube to find the best post-process Kylo Ren voice and he had it. A link in the description is where you can find his channel and he has a video of where you can find out which processes he actually used for his Kylo Ren. So what if you want to play Kylo at conventions and you don't have a computer to post-process or being in a film? You just want to do it uh, walking around the house. No problem at all. You need one of these bad boys. This, this is your liberation. It is a voice amp, not a voice changer, like the one that comes with the Black Series helmet. That thing is pure trash. If you think you need a voice changer, for a Kylo Ren or a Kylo Ren Black Series helmet, you are completely, totally dead wrong. You need a voice amp. What I have here is this exact thing. I got this idea from Anthony, is it Sevens? I think it's Sevens, sorry bro for mispronouncing your name. Your name used to be Kylo Kenobi, I'm just gonna call you that. But he had the exact same thing I have essentially right here, your standard headset that's included with a voice amp. Turn it on, do not turn it on all the way very fast. You're gonna get feedback. Go up very slowly. I have a little custom setup where I have Velcro tied into a Velcro here of the helmet. I put it in and I'm ready to go. Remember, do your impression and you'll sound like If you wanna sound like Kylo Ren, I suggest you use a voice amp and not a voice changer. Look how old you've become. Sounds light years. Better than the voice changer. There's no fucking stupid echo. My God, Anthony Sevens, you the man. Last bit, don't rely on the voice amp like you would a voice changer. You must have your Kylo impression ready like I just did it right there. The amp will amplify it and make it better. Your mindset must be the same thing if you're doing a Bane impression. Now, lots of people, they just assume, I'm gonna talk in a mighty voice and cut my hands in front of my face and I sound like Bane. That's actually not it at all. You need to have the voice before you do your muffling with your 
hands or I'm just going to use the mask I have here. So here's a line from the film without the mask. I'm on your schedule, Captain. Round them up for judgment and hang them so that the world can see. Now, let's put on the mask and see how much better it sounds. I'm on your schedule, Captain. Round them up for judgment and hang them so that the world can see. How good of you to join us, Chair. President, now I need only one more ordinary board member, Mr. Fox. Who would you like to nominate? Lastly, do not let doubt or indecision weigh you down. If you're giving too much effort, just dial it back and relax. So, I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, give it a like. Let me know if it helped you out or not. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed, because for some reason, 98% of my views, which is over 16 million, is coming from non-subscribers. That's crazy. Anyways, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this shit. I'm Brando, and I thank you for choosing. See you